We've got the Chargers at the Broncos on Sunday afternoon. It's Brian Leonard's free pick coming up in just a moment. The Broncos lane seven and a half points here. Total 48 and a half. Uh, Brian, you think there's going to be a, a few teasers tied to the Denver Broncos on Sunday? Uh, <laughs> so, and, and I tell you what, Denver was in a tough spot, looked like, at least on paper in traditional NFL situations. It was a tough situation last week. They go into Carolina and they make quick work of the Panthers for the most part. Yeah, I had the Panthers in that game and uh, – it's, it's funny, quick little story. The last time these two met, Marco <laughs> and I happened to be going out for Monday Night Football and watching the game. And I hit Denver, he has San Diego, and we live in at the half, and I'm getting killed. Marco's having the time of his life. <laughs> Him winning, I, I don't know what he bet on the game, but being there with me and knowing I had the other side, he was enjoying the hell out of that game. I got to ask you one quick question before you move on. Is this the place that has the 25 cent wings and the it's actually uh, free wings and free 25 wings. cent beers? Well they, well, they raised the price to 50 cents for a draft. Oh, beer. okay. Well, that probably helped. I was going to ask if he if he That's offered why we to leave buy. Time now instead of the fall game. <laughs> I thought maybe he offered to buy with you know the 25 50 we, cent we, wings. We have done that in the past. <laughs> nice guy buy your wings if you but you know, it, it, we're getting, I'm getting killed at the half, and I go back home, and it's coming up on basketball season. I said, well, this game's over. Start working on basketball. And he tweets me. He goes, or he emails me. He goes, here come the Broncos, and I thought he was being. Right. Typical Marco. <laughs> and then you know, I finish some stuff. I come downstairs. I say, well, let's see what's going on. I turn on the game, and they're right back in the game. So this is kind of a grudge match situation here. For us, but <laughs> it's, uh, you know, you take a look at San Diego. Four of the last five games they've lost. The only game they won against Kansas mm -hmm. City. And uh, the Chargers have been held offensively to 340 yards in six of their nine games. I've talked about this in the past. I think Rivers has got something wrong with him. He just doesn't look very good throwing the football. Um, interesting, San Diego, uh, the last five times they've gone to Denver, they've won four of those games straight up. The only game they didn't win, they only lose by a point. So they played very well in Denver, but I'm, I'm going to take Denver here. I, I, it's, you talk, we talked about how Denver last week, I was on Carolina. Denver's made a believer out of me, and I'll get back to more of that when we get to my summary. I channel. gotta tell you what our director said when you said you didn't know what was wrong with Philip Rivers, and of course our director said he's got six kids. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Marco, we could talk about Peyton Manning and this mm -hmm. Denver offense all night long, uh, but the Bronco defense has played much better than I thought they were going to before the season. Last week they sacked Cam Newton seven times. They held the Panthers to 250 yards. Carolina averaged less than four yards per play in that game. This was a Carolina team that had been playing everybody tough for the most part, even in the losses. Uh, but again, I think John Fox doesn't get enough credit for what he and his staff have done the last two years in place with the Denver Broncos. First of all, from changing the offense, a complete overhaul yeah. for what they had to do to give themselves their best chance to win with Tim Tebow at quarterback last year. And then this year, again, completely changing the offense around, getting everybody on the same page. Of course, it's easy to get things on the same page when you've got a smart guy like Peyton Manning under center, but the defense is just playing so well right now. Well, part of the defense, I mean, last year they were benefited by the fact that with the offense they were running, they had time of possession because Denver was running the ball and chewing up some clock. Yet, they never had separation in the game. So every time they were on the field, it was almost like life or death defensive stands because they couldn't give up points because they knew they weren't going to score a lot. Right. Now you can go out there, you can take s some more chances. You can gamble a little bit because if you do make a mistake and give up seven points, you know Peyton's going to get it back for you. So I think it has made the defense better. But I'm going to tell you, honestly, this is a game I'm not going to be involved in. One of the reasons, and we talked about it on an earlier video, and it's I don't want any parts of San Diego, but I can't pull the trigger on Denver because this is one of those situations like New England was in last week. They're at home for the second meeting. They already beat this team on the road, and they beat them by more than they're laying here. And to me, that just looks too easy as an automatic handicap. And I just don't – if it looks that easy to me – Something's wrong. You either play the other yeah, side yeah, or stay away. And you're exactly. Stay away because of North Turkey. Oh, you know, the other San, side San Diego's. I mean, I do a radio spot with uh, Chris Townsend uh, every week, and he's from San Diego. And I, I bust his chops all the time about the Chargers and you know the Steelers and Super Bowls, kind of like I do with you with the Browns. But <laughs> he's actually rooting for the Chargers to lose right now, so that they could finally end this with Norv. I mean, well, that's what I was going to say to you, Brian. As we throw it to you again, is are you buying this that it's Norv Turner? They're finally the heat's finally on. 
and this is it, he's going to be gone, or is this going to be another situation where this team, you know, all of a sudden goes crazy again over the final six or seven weeks of the season like they normally do? This stuff's been going on for years over there. I mean, anybody who is not affiliated with the Chargers knows there should be a coaching change. For some reason, they've got naked pictures of the owners. I don't know what's <laughs> going on over there. But this guy should have lost his job a long time ago. He's a bad manager in the game. He doesn't have his team prepared. Take a look at what San Diego does in the second half of their games. You know, just not the Denver game. Mm -hmm. They played very well in the first half. In the second half on the season, they're getting beat when they should be making adjustments at halftime. Well, let's get your free pick on this one. I lost going against Denver last week. I'm not going to do it again this week. Now, granted, this game was seven earlier in the week. It was a much better play at seven than it is now. I see it creeping up to seven and a half, eight. Wouldn't surprise me if it continues to go up. But I want to know part of the San Diego Chargers here. You go back and take a look at the Broncos' victories this season. They've won their games by 12, 31, 11, 28, 22. This is a team can extend a lead when they have the lead. San Diego is not a team I want coming back. We saw that last week against Tampa. Once Tampa got an extra that extra touchdown. San Diego is bound to make a mistake. They've done it all season long. I can't see anything different happening here. Denver takes the lead and they extend. I'll lay the points with the Broncos. I still can understand how Turner keeps his job year after year and after what Marty Schottenheimer did, he was out so quickly. Anyway, I'm sure there's a lot of San Diego fans out there who aren't even involved when it comes to betting who are rooting for Brian Leonard's <laughs> side really big this week looking to get rid of Norv Turner. When we come back, it's Sunday Night Football and who better to talk about that than Mr. Pittsburgh over here. It's the Ravens and the Steelers up next to pregame.tv.